What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the first ever episode of the Recover Athletics Run Healthy podcast. On this podcast, we're going to talk with runners, doctors, coaches, other experts on how to enjoy the sport of running in a happy, healthy, and sustainable way. Um, We're super excited to bring you this podcast. There's lots of people in the sport who have learned through their own trial and error or for treating thousands of patients um, how to have a really healthy and solid relationship with the sport. And uh, yeah, I think that there's a lot of wisdom that those people can pass on. So we're excited to bring that to you guys. Um, For those of you who don't know us at Recover Athletics, we designed the first ever injury prevention app for runners. Uh, Every runner knows they need to be doing something to help them stay injury free. The question is, what do I do? Do I do stretching? Do I do strength training? What about my particular injury history? Um, The process of injury prevention can be kind of complicated, uh, but we designed an app in partnership with clinicians at Harvard Medical School and Mass General Hospital in Boston. Um, to help make that complicated process of staying injury free really simple. Um, So if you go to the Apple App Store, you can check us out. The app is called Recover Athletics, same as our social handles at Recover Athletics on Facebook and Instagram. Check us out. Um, But more on that later. Uh, In this next segment, we'll jump into my interview with Molly Seidel, a member of the 2020 Olympic marathon team who has come back from more injuries than you can imagine and has lots of wisdom to share with us. So please enjoy that. And uh, we'll talk soon. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by a friend of mine from Boston whose absolutely fearless run at the 2020 Olympic trials landed her a spot on the U.S. Olympic marathon team. She is the queen of injury comebacks and has learned through setbacks of a different kind what it takes to run healthily and reach her goals. She also may be the fastest barista in history. Welcome to the Run Healthy podcast, Molly Seidel. Sweet. Thanks for having me. I am so pumped to chat with you today. How is training in quarantine these days? <laughs> training in quarantine, we're, uh, we're getting by. It's definitely not the, um, the best running that I've ever done, but I feel like right now I'm kind of trying to take this as an opportunity to um, recharge a little bit mentally and physically and maybe take a step back. It's just, it's so difficult with so many things being closed and just dealing with the stress of everything going on. Yeah, it's really bizarre. I feel like, I feel like there's not, there's just, I, I, as a person, I love stories and like history to get me through like complicated situations, but it doesn't feel like there's an equivalent, like rarely do people have to suffer alone. Sometimes people have to like suffer together. Yeah, it's just, it really is so unprecedented, I feel like, because it's like, we go from like kind of what our normal world was, you're interacting with people, you're going out to eat. And, and then all of a sudden the world is just shut down. Like no. I, I've only seen my friends like over video chat, really like, heck, I haven't seen you in like, I don't know, what has it been like weeks at this point? So yeah. it's like, I think it's just really hard for a lot of people because it's like really the only thing we can do to fight this is to just be alone. Yeah. It's re- I saw a billboard in Boston that said like, uh, it said like your grandparents had to go to war. You have to sit on the couch. You can do this. God, I feel like this is the most like millennial crisis, like yeah. impossible. Like what, what we do to serve is to sit on our computers. I know it's unbelievable. Well, listen, I mean, we haven't actually chatted, like we texted a bunch, but we haven't chatted over the phone since the marathon trials. How are you doing? Has it set in? Like, do you, did you get the blue uniform in the mail yet? These are all the No, questions. no. So we're not going to get those now for a really long time with the whole postponement. I think it was finally starting to set in. Like, obviously, after it happened, it was so crazy. I, I didn't expect that to happen. So it kind of, like, hadn't sunk in. And then the whole world fell apart. And all of a sudden, that seems like such a trivial thing to be caring about when it's, like, when there are people dying, it's, like, I feel like it's such an insignificant thing to complain that, oh, the Olympics are going to be a year later now. Um, But regardless, it's hard. It's sad. It's, I feel like I definitely have gone through a little bit of like mourning of like, oh yeah, shoot. Like this is something that I had really like, you're aiming so hard for. It's like, I don't know, the culmination of, I feel like so many years of running and now it's like JK dog, you're just going to have to wait, which is okay. Like this it needed to be postponed. Totally. Totally. What does it, what does your training look like with such like a long horizon? Cause it was going to be a quick turnaround and now it's a really long horizon. Yeah. Um, originally my plan had been to take a little bit of time, but then gear right back up for the 10 K I was going to try and do the 10 K on the track. Um, and now obviously we've got nothing but time. So basically what we're doing now is taking some downtime, just building up mileage base 
And then hopefully I'll try to add in a, um, another marathon cycle. So we don't know yet if the fall marathons are going to happen. I certainly hope so. Um, but I would be looking to do one of the majors in the fall. Cool. Cool. Any idea which one cough, cough, Boston, cough, cough, or do you not know yet? Cough, cough, Boston is actually the only one I wouldn't do just it is so early. Um, and it's so early. So training wise, it wouldn't be necessarily the cycle that I want to be on. And then additionally, right now, talking with people in the industry, there isn't a whole, there isn't an exceedingly positive feeling that that's going to happen if the, if the projections for coronavirus are a little bit longer than, than what we've seen. So that's kind of like the highest risk right there. However, I, I had been reached out to by the, the um, coordinators of Boston and I'm hoping definitely to do it in the future. I just don't think this year it's in the cards for me. Makes sense. Makes sense. So today, what I want to talk about, like the meat of the conversation is I'd love to learn a little bit about your journey from a pattern of recurring injury to a really long extended period of sustainable running that resulted in this incredible Olympic birth. So Mm -hmm. we chatted once upon a time on a podcast that will probably never come off the shelves, although maybe uh, about uh, you coming back from a big bone stress injury to win your first NCA title. And then in the in-between time, you came back from another bone stress injury, but have for the last period of time had a really long extended block of good training. Then you make the Olympic team. Was there a shift in the way that you were training to that kind of allowed you to break through and stay healthy for a long period of time? Yes. So part of it was, is that I, I, the last time we talked, it was right when I was coming off of, basically six months of no running. I had had this bone stress injury um, that basically was from college that never healed. I had to get surgery on it. And so I got the surgery and then could not run for six months. So right when we last talked is basically as I was starting back up running again. In that period, I had on and off a ton of different things. It was Part of it was just that my body was not used to running um, high mileage yet. Part of it was we didn't know whether or not my body was going to be able to handle that kind of training anymore. So I kept having things flare up. I was trying to do more traditional 10K training, which was my main event. Right. Um, and it just kind of kept getting me hurt. It kind of felt like I was just banging my head against the wall. Sure. Um, that basically culminated last summer in right after Peachtree, I re-hurt my hip. Um, it definitely wasn't as serious. It was kind of like a light stress reaction. But that was kind of the moment of realizing like, okay, like something needs to change. So I ended up, um, I ended up leaving the training group that I was in um, with, with Tim Brown, the Stockton Freedom Track Club. I still have enormous respect for the group, um, but I think I needed a different kind of training. It's definitely a more track focused group um, and kind of needed something that was going to be maybe a little bit more more suited to my strengths. And so I left the group and my friend, John Green, who also um, was in the process of leaving the group, started writing workouts for me. Um, Definitely more marathon type workouts. We didn't have the, the plan of running a marathon at that point, but it was just like, okay, what keeps me healthy is long, steady training, moderate workouts, not the kind of really intense track workouts that you would normally do for track. Um, Yeah. And so we were doing that um, pretty basically in August then when I was able to start building back up again and just kind of finding like, oh, wow, like my body feels really good. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm able to like put weeks and weeks and weeks together. Whereas before I was only getting like two weeks of healthy running in. Um, And then as we, we start to proceed through the fall, feeling really strong, mileage is getting up there, finally getting a block together and really just being conscious of like, okay, like if something ever hurts, being very quick to be like, okay, we're just going to cross train. We'll cut a workout. We just need to do what we need to do for me to stay healthy. Basically got to the point where I was strong enough that we thought, hey, let's run a half marathon, see how it goes, see where the strength is, qualified for the Olympic trials. And John started getting a little bit excited then. He was like, hey, you know what? Like, why not? Just try it. Like, let's run the Olympic trials. Like, might be might be kind of a cool thing to do. You'll get the experience for four years down the line. Um, I mean, it can't hurt. I mean, it could hurt, but we were like, you know what? Like, might as well go for it. And that kind of started off the marathon build. And 
yeah, I guess from there it was kind of just like, yeah, I don't know. It feels like things really clicked into place. Like my body definitely benefits from marathon type training, but it was, it was having to realize like, okay, track type training isn't working for me. How am I going to modify my training to fit the conditions that my body is? conditions like okay do hard track intervals which right. is definitely like I think for a lot of people that would kind of be like the limiting factor of like okay like if you can't do hard track intervals why are you a pro runner right. um but we try to see that as an opportunity that like okay we'll just do all our workouts on the road we'll do a moderate and we'll just bang out mileage yeah I re- I kind of I remember well that was one of the first things so I'm like a huge nerd when it comes to like running training and and training philosophy and I remember that was one of the first things you and I talked about when we came, became friends and I was like in mega nerd mode. I was like, what do you do on this day? What do you do? What do you, what does this block look like? What does this block look like? And you mentioned, you're like, these types of workouts just put me in, like, it takes me too long to recover from them. It doesn't work for me. And I was kind of like, wow, like that's so interesting. I feel like if Molly Seidel writes a training book, it would be know thyself, like (laughs) be honest with what you can and can't do. And so I wonder like, so you say no hard track workouts are very limited. Mm -hmm. What, Was it a complicated process kind of being like all the other pro runners are doing this I'm gonna do this and I'm still gonna like whoop on them like that is yeah so I guess that's the problem that's almost like part of my I don't know my my own like worries going into that race I was like how am I supposed to compete with these people who are able to maintain this level of training that I simply can't um I had been out in Flagstaff training for the majority of my buildup, but the last two weeks before the race, I actually, I left Flagstaff and I went and stayed with family friends in Boulder because the, I was getting so caught up in seeing what all of these other women, so like Sarah Hall, Kellen Taylor, Steph Bruce, um, all of these really, really good women, I was seeing what they were doing and seeing the level of work they were able to maintain. Yeah. And it was really like, I was so down on myself because I was like, I can't do half the amount of work that these women are doing. I saw Sarah Hall do this insane, like basically like a 27 mile workout. And I was like, oh my God, like the longest I've ever worked out is 18 miles. The longest run I've ever done period is 24 miles. Like I'm not going to be able to finish this damn marathon. And seeing that was really hard. But John would just keep reminding me, like, remember, you're 10 years younger than these women. You have literally only had six months of healthy running under your belt. Like, don't get caught up in what they're doing. Right now, we're maintaining the highest level of work that we can do without you getting hurt. And it's more important you getting to the line healthy than getting to the line, like, fit out of your damn mind. Yeah, I feel like that's, that's such an interesting balance in running. It's like, okay, I can show up to this race in like the absolute best condition possible aerobically, but that may mean that the tendons, the muscles, the joints are like in a little bit of a compromised state. And it seems like you're able to find that, um, that, that, that kind of knife edge and walk along it. Are there certain types of things that you just won't do? Like no hard 400s, like those types of things are just out of the program Mm -hmm. or are they modified? Um, everything's modified. So I did 400 workouts in the buildup, but it's definitely more like tempo or 10 K pace. Um, part of it is, is just, I'm not a fast runner. Like I know that sounds like weird for someone who's like qualified for the Olympics, but like, I naturally am not like a fast twitch runner. Like I've never been good with speed type stuff. So like straight up sometimes like our our friend James Randon is like the epitome of what I think of like a speed runner. He can bang out like absolutely insane, like 200s, 400s, 600s at different paces. Like he's got mile pace. He's got 5k pace. He's got 10k pace. Like I straight up have one pace. Like my mile pace isn't that much faster than my 10k pace. So it's like, you kind of, it's kind of like back to that idea of like, you just have to work with what you're given. Like I'm never going to be that speed person who's going to thrive off of doing like really fast 300. So it's like, there's no point doing it because it gets me hurt and I get marginal benefit out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And and so like runners who are looking to string together, like long periods of healthy running for the first time, what is, what is your advice to them? It sounds like it's like, look away from the crowd. Don't care what other people are doing. Just learn more about yourself. But 
Is there sort of like one tidbit that you kept coming back to or one thing your coach said that was really impactful? Um, get rid of the ego. Like that was a huge thing for me because coming back from these injuries, especially after the six months off, I kept comparing my progress to like, oh, like I used to be able to do tempos at 515 pace and now I can barely manage six minute pace. Like, especially right as I was coming back or like my mileage was so low compared to it. It's like, I should be able to manage a higher level of work than what I'm doing right now. I should be doing this. I should be doing this. And a big part of it was just like getting rid of the ego and not thinking like, you're not Molly four time NCAA champion right now. You're Molly who's hasn't run for six months and is coming off of what could have been a career end ending hip injury and so it's like, just, you have to work with where you are at that moment. So like, you can't use your paces from the past. Like I couldn't, I couldn't say like, okay, I'm going to work out at 10 K pace and use my 10 K pace from college. It's like, you have to realize where you are, have the self-awareness and not get like, not get so caught up in it that you try to push yourself too hard, too fast. Totally. Cause like right when I was coming back, yeah, my mileage was super low. I was not working out hard. Like I straight up didn't think I was ever going to be able to run a marathon. Cause I was like barely able to run six miles at a time. Right. And so it's like, you just have to slowly build and it comes with time. Consistency is the big thing. The speed will come. The mileage will come. It's just getting in that consistent work day after day and your body will learn and your body will improve and get stronger, but it takes time. Totally. Yeah. I, f I feel like that applies to just anyone at any level of running. Like I could not, I remember one time I was jogging and you happened to be on the same route doing a tempo workout. And I was just like, Oh, I'll slot it with Molly for like, yeah, maybe a couple hundred meters. And I remember just being like, Oh my God, I cannot hold this woman's marathon pace for one lap of the track. But like this, the same, the same lesson applies, like regardless of if like you're trying to go like crush your Thanksgiving 5k, or if you're trying to go out there like, and make the Olympic team, like don't, dig into or when you spend time digging into your like old splits from high school or whatever it's just like completely gonna it's gonna ruin you just stay like where you are right now yeah exactly and like and also not having the ego to think like I have to do like if a workout is on the schedule and if you feel really horrible that day like you whether you're sick or you're nursing a small injury or something I would always in the past be such a freaking hammerhead or just have too big of an ego to say like, okay, you know what? I need to move this workout. I, I shouldn't be doing this today. I'll get more benefit of tomorrow. I used to always just push through, get it done. And a lot of times that would lead to me getting really hurt. And oh. in this marathon buildup, we actually had quite a few workouts that like I went into it and I was feeling like shit. And John just said, nope, cut it. We'll do it another day. We won't do this one. Like, I hate to admit how many workouts I did miss in that buildup, but it's like, that's what kept me from going over that red line. Cause it's like, if I got another fracture, that's it for me. Like I can't afford to do that. Yeah. It feels like you have like this, there's a level of mental resilience, but there's also just like a level of like wisdom and patience when you're just like, I'm just going to do this tomorrow. If I do this today, like there's no way it's going to help me out. It's just going to be a setback or I'm just like inching closer to an inevitable setback. It's just like really interesting but I feel like I feel like with your story in particular like you seem to have like reached high heights injury high heights injury high heights injury it's kind of like that when I think of Molly Seidel I'm like it's this it's fall time fall down seven times get up eight mentality that I definitely think is like a huge part of your success and I wonder if that like does that get any easier to to get up again when you've got knocked down a bunch of times I don't know if I would say that it's easier to get up like getting back up is always really hard it's always a process but I think having dealt with a lot of setbacks it gives me a really good perspective when things do happen so like especially like with the first like really big injury you're like I'm never gonna run healthy again and it's like no like you you work through it you get through it and I think over time it's given me the perspective of like if something happens it's like, okay, we're going to deal with it. I'm much more okay with like taking time off because I've had enough experiences at this point of like, okay, if I try to push through something really bad, it's just going to keep extending it. Um, so yeah, it gives me a little bit more forethought. And it's like, even with the really big ones, even with like when you have a doctor telling you like, okay, you've got a 50% chance of ever like running competitively again, just 
having the experience of having to like overcome that stuff before helped me through that because I don't know if I hadn't had like other really big injuries if I'd have had like the I don't know the strength to like get through get through that like message from the doctor and then the next six months of not being able to do anything and not knowing yeah that's super interesting I've I've not heard something like that before but that makes sense it's like okay you've heard yet you've got a 50 50 shot once before and you know what side of that you ended up on and then it's just like all right I'm back on I'm getting on the right side of that again you know yeah well even then because when I re-hurt my hip that next summer I I straight up called my college coach just like sobbing because I was like, I was convinced at that point that was the end. I straight up told them like, I don't know if I can do this again. I don't know if I can like go through this in like injury rehab cycle and get back up. Like, I'm just so tired. I'm in so much pain. I don't know if I can do this. He's like, shut up. You're being dumb. Like you're going to get through this just like you have before. It's like, it's just the same thing you've done. Just be patient work through it you're going to come back from it and like then after the trials like he was one of the first people I called when we were like in the press conference and he was like see told you so that's hilarious I love that I was like I was just about to ask I was like did he just say told you so and then hung up the phone (laughs) that's unreal that's so unreal well I mean this this next question and like next thing that I was thinking about this could be a subject of a much longer conversation but I know and like from interviews that I've read and some conversations I've had with you that sustainable fueling and nutrition are a big part of this is is that something that's changed a little bit recently or did marathon training help you get on the right side of that how was that a part of like this healthy period um yeah i think with marathon training you definitely have to nail it out more um one in terms of just general fueling eating it up you have to eat so much um totally and then i was really into the whole idea of like fueling during running like taking in fluids taking in gels um truthfully, I still really suck at it. I, um, I'm now like officially sponsored by Morton. So the, which was the gels and the the fluid that I was taking during the race. And after the marathon, I was on a call with Tobias, who's like one of the head nutritionists there. Um, and I was telling him like the amounts that I was taking, which I just, I kind of guessed at what I was supposed to be doing. Right. Um, and I told him what I was taking. He was like, oh my God, you were taking like less than half of what you actually needed during that race. He's like, I'm amazed you didn't bonk. I'm like, well, I'm glad I know this now and I will use this in the future. So I'm lucky that now I do have those guys who are like actual science, um, like are actually like experts in nutrition fueling. So my next marathon I go into, I'll actually like know what my fuel requirements were because I was just kind of like, yeah, shot in the dark, guessing how much I needed. Right on. I feel like that's running in a nutshell. It's like you can listen to all this wisdom, you can read these books, and then you get out there and you're like, oh, this is absolutely nothing like Lydiard says in this old book. This is nothing like Jack Daniels or one of these like big coaches. It's like you just got to go kind of figure it out for yourself. Well, yeah, and I think it's really individualized for everybody. Like I had, I was asking so much advice from different people, like what I should take, how much I should take, and everybody was telling me something different. And it eventually just came down to, I like, I like the taste of Morton. It's pretty neutral. So that's just what I chose to use. And then I just figured out kind of like the amount that I was physically able to consume during a race. Like I had little bottles and then I taped a gel to each bottle with like, I thought that I was going to be taking the full bottle and shooting a gel. And it just got to the point where I physically, like, all I could do was get that fluid down. I could not even take the gel. I tried to take one caffeine gel and started gagging. So it's like, you just kind of do what you can in the race and hope for the best. I remember I was in a brewery. This is like my, this is a true pro running moment. I was in a brewery. I was like watching the trials. Brian's in the lead. And I'm like, wow, the Saucony people are doing unreal. And then the pack, the women's pack starts to break up. And I get a, I see a tweet that's like Molly Seidel is with the lead group. And I'm like, time to start streaming the race. <laughs> and then I was just like, holy shit, this girl's going to make the Olympic team. It was the last four miles were absolutely unreal. Like me and the recovery squad, we were just losing our minds in this brewery and it was in Worcester and people were just like what are these <laughs> doing and like what are they watching it was an awesome moment yeah it was, that was a really really fun day like especially like my whole family was there so many friends were down there in Atlanta my my family had gotten these huge like faces of me like as a little kid and like printed them out and were like 
carrying them all around the course. Izzy had this one of like cowboy Molly of me in like my cowboy costume when I was in like first grade. So yeah, I definitely had the best cheer squad down there. That's unreal. Well, congrats again. I mean, I'm so excited for Tokyo. It may be a long way out, but I'm excited to see healthy Molly Seidel in the mix of the best in the world. I think she can. Knock on wood. (laughs) Unreal. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me, Molly. This has been super fun. Um, I hope that runners who are listening, you don't need to make an Olympic team to learn what workouts keep you healthy. You don't need to be in Olympic shape to learn how to have a healthy relationship with the sport. Molly is the epitome of a total badass. So follow her on social, get hyped for the journey as she goes. And I don't know, I remember I was in the running store a couple, like a week and a half before the trials. And you were like, I'm going to go mix it up with them. And I was like, this girl could come back with some hardware. Who knows? <laughs> Happen again. Wow. It, it was great getting to talk with you. What's going on? Welcome to the post show of the first ever Run Healthy podcast. That was super cool getting to chat with Molly. She's out there in Wisconsin, coming back to the East Coast soon, but still able to pass on some of the wisdom of someone who's come back from a lot of different injuries. Um, Molly's been a great part of the Recover Athletics team, has given us feedback on the app, um, and has helped, uh, you know. Uh, helped us understand the runner experience to make the app as good as possible. So if you want to check it out, we are the Recover Athletics app. So if you go into the Apple App Store and type in Recover Athletics, you can use the same injury prevention software as Olympic team member Molly Seidel. Thank you so much. If you have runners that you think would be an awesome guest on this podcast, please let us know, reach out, and we will do our best to convince them to come chat with us. Run healthy, be well, and we will talk to you soon.